This is the first video of the probability distribution part 3 theme where we are going to discuss about continuous probability distribution functions and we discuss mainly in this video the uh, exponential distribution and in a different video we discuss the normal distribution. So the exponential distribution is a continuous probability distribution which normally focus on the waiting time. It's a distribution that is used to model the waiting time between, for example, two Poisson occurrences. Like if you consider, a suppose you have a, a time scale uh, related to an accident, right, over a week, right, and then you have, let's suppose, one accident here occurs randomly and the other accident occurs randomly here. You can model the waiting time between these two occurrences using the exponential distribution. So the probability that you have to wait, let's suppose, uh, I don't know, one, one day to get an accident, the probability that you have to wait at least two days to get an accident, and so on, can be modeled through the exponential distribution. So if you have two Poisson occurrences here, you can measure, uh, you can evaluate the probability of uh, the waiting time between these two occurrences, as we just said. And so I repeat, normally, if you want to know when to apply the exponential distribution, most of the time it's going to be applied for cases where you are evaluating the waiting time between two events all right and more precisely here the two poisson events now the exponential distribution is defined as uh, it takes the form of lambda e power negative lambda x now what is this lambda that we are going to use here what does this mean in fact, on its own, it doesn't mean much, except if you look at one open lambda. One open lambda represent the average, represent the average of your variable x, that is your average waiting time, as I said. X is basically modeling a waiting time between two occurrences of an event. So here, you will say that um, the uh, one open lambda represent the average of the uh, waiting time, if x represents the waiting time between two occurrences. In other words, lambda is just the reciprocal of the average. So it's just a rate which represents the reciprocal of the average. This is why you have to be careful, is that whenever you are asked a question in on exponential distribution, you need to know precisely what this lambda is. If in your question you are given an average, all right, waiting time, let's suppose, then you cannot use the, uh, you cannot say that lambda is equal to this average that you got here. You will have to take the reciprocal of this average to be able to get your lambda, all right? Just remember that, you have to take the reciprocal of your average to obtain your lambda. <coughs> and here you will see that a, your x, your random variable x, let's suppose the waiting time between two Poisson occurrences will uh, be at least zero. So you have different examples here that are explained, that are given to explain, uh, to apply, where you can apply rather the exponential distribution, you can go for it on your own. The next thing that you need to understand is what does it look like? Like uh, you will see each distribution um, takes a certain form, all right? And here, one, the, the exponential distribution will generally look something like this. You will have your, uh, your probability density on the vertical, uh, which is um, your probability distribution function, which is represented rather by this curve. And fx is on the vertical, your density function. And then on the horizontal, you have your values of x, that is, for example, the waiting time. All right, the waiting time between two Poisson occurrences, two events of Poisson. Therefore, and you will observe that as lambda decreases, the shape tends to flatten a little bit more. 
right? As lambda is decreasing, you will see that the shapes flatten more. So this is the characteristic, so it's a bit of the exponential distribution of how it looks like. And you will see that uh, as your uh, as your value of x is increasing, the probability of x being above a certain value start to decrease at some point in time. So the probability that you have to wait a very long time between two Poisson occurrences might be very small, as you see here. All right? The probability of waiting a very, very long time before you get a two, uh, between two Poisson occurrences might be, uh, is supposed, is expected to be quite small from what you can deduce here. Now, having said so, What's our next step is to also know what are the properties of a distribution. As I said to you, all distribution has got their properties. And what are the properties of each distribution? Of course, they have their mean and they have their variance, as you already know. Okay. And if they have their mean and they have a variance, uh, we we have a form of a mean. You have a form of a, the variance, like if you have seen just a few minutes ago, I told you that the expected value of an exponential uh, random variable is going to be equal to one upon lambda, all right? It's going to be equal to one upon lambda. So if you say that X follows an exponential distribution, you won't say it is one upon lambda, but you say it follows lambda. So if your average was 0 0.1, then your X would have followed an exponential with parameter 10, which is basically the reciprocal of 0 0.1 here. So, if this was 10, then this was supposed to be uh, 0 0.1 here. So, when I've said that, you know that the mean is given by 1 upon lambda and the variance is given by 1 upon lambda squared. These are the two things. So if you are given a question on exponential distribution, if you are asked to find the average from an exponential distribution, you know that you need to do 1 upon lambda. And if you are asked to find the variance, it is 1 upon lambda squared. But you will see that there is another property that you've heard of before, which is the geometric which is the same as the geometric distribution. And this property is what we call the memoryless property. Just like in the example of geometric distribution, the exponential distribution also has got this property in the continuous setting. In the discrete setting, it's the geometric distribution which got this property. In the continuous setting, the only distribution which has got this property is the memoryless is the uh, exponential distribution. To understand the exponential distribution, let us take a small example. Let's suppose um, we have James reach the bus stop at noon. All right. James reached the bus stop at noon and waits for at least 10, wait for 10 minutes. All right before getting his bus. Wait for at least 10 minutes before he's getting his bus. Huh? And now let's suppose John comes at uh, 10 past noon. So, and he, he stays on the bus stop for five minutes. So just look at this example. Uh, James is at the bus stop for 10 minutes. He still didn't get his bus, all right? And he's waiting together with John to reach the bus stop at 10, uh, at, uh, 10 past 12. Now, I ask you a question. What is the probability but James has to wait at least five minutes before he gets his bus. What is the probability that he has to wait 
an additional 10 minutes, add additional 5 minutes, if he has already been waiting 10 minutes, all right, what is the probability, if he has already been waiting 10 minutes, what is the probability that he has to wait an additional 5 minutes before he gets his bus? Let's suppose this value is a certain value A, or let's make it like 0 0.1. What is this 0 0.1? We ask. We are saying that this 0 0.1 represents the probability that James has to wait at least five additional minutes before getting his bus. When I mean by five additional minutes, I mean that he has been given that he has been waiting 10 minutes. What's the probability that he has to wait at least five minutes? So given he has been waiting 10 minutes, What's the probability that he has to wait at least five minutes before he gets his bus? Let's suppose this is 0 0.1. Now I ask you a different question. What is the probability that John has to wait at least five minutes before he gets his bus? What is the probability that John has to wait at least five minutes before he gets his bus? Bus. According to you, what this probability will be? What is going to be this probability? If you think about it well, you will see that this probability is still 0 0.1. It's still 0 0.1. It cannot be higher. It cannot be smaller. It cannot be a smaller probability for John than James. It's not because James has been waiting at least 10 minutes, that is, his probability it will be higher of getting a bus within 5 minutes than that of John. That doesn't make any sense. So, the, even if James has been waiting 10 minutes, the probability that he has to wait at least 5 minutes to get his bus is going to be the same as anybody like John who come there at this time and has to wait at least 5 minutes it's going to be the same thing. It's not going to be different. It's not because it's been waiting a longer time. It means that it's going to get a higher probability. That doesn't make sense. His probability is the same. So what is happening here, if you look at this carefully? What is happening here is that you are dealing with the memoryless property, where the evaluation of the probability that James has to wait at least five minutes, given he has been waiting 10 minutes, is just simply equal to the probability that he has to wait at least five minutes. In other words, everything starts afresh from here again. Everything starts uh, new, newly from here. So it's not because he's been waiting 10 minutes, his probability is going to be higher. Everything starts just from 10, from 10 past 12, that's all. So this is where you see this property of the formula here. This te formula tells you in this example, in this particular example, given that uh, James has been waiting for at least 10 minutes, what's the probability that he has to wait an additional 5 minutes? An additional 5 minutes means he has to wait at least 15 minutes overall, right? At least 15 minutes given he has been waiting 10 minutes. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. An additional 5 minutes does not mean you put 5 here. It means that you are still dealing with the same random variable x. So in other words, it means that you have John has to, uh, James has to wait at least 15 minutes given he has been waiting 10 minutes. All right? The probab so the probability that James has to wait an additional 5 minutes is translated in probability like x is greater than 15 and not x is greater than 5 because we are dealing with the same x, all right? It's x greater than 15 given x is greater than 10 and we also that this is just equal to the probability that he has to wait an additional 5 minutes. So basically here, this is quite intuitive. We've already seen this through the example that we just talked about here. But mathematically, you can also see that this is the same thing. Like you, you saw that we just said that the memoryless property said that the probability that x is greater than s plus t, given x is greater than t, 
is equal to the probability that x is greater than s as we saw in this property down there. Now, if you try to figure out what's going on in this here, in this uh, equation here, you will see that you can break down probability that x is greater than, given x is greater than, equal to the probability that x is greater than, okay? So here, probability that x is greater than t is the same as s plus t. Now, what is t? t in our example is 10. And then, what are you adding with 10? You are adding 5 plus 10. And 5 is representing your s, and t is representing your 10, as you see here. And according to this equation, this is supposed to be greater than s. x is going to give you the probability that x is greater than s. And what's the probability that x is greater than s? Probability that x is greater than 5. So we've already seen it mathematically as it is here, and intuitively as well, we have understood what it means. It means that you forget the past. It means that you, the future is independent of the past. The probability does not depend on what happened in the past. That is the idea of memoryless property. Now, basically, the memoryless property is stating that old is as new, good as new. Old is as good as new, but you have to be careful. This does not apply for all contexts, obviously. It applies for cases where you are dealing with uh, waiting time. Like if you are looking at the case of electronic components, and if these electronic components are not subject to wear and tear, are not subject to any uh, Poisson occurrences or whatever, they are not subject to wear and tear, their probability, you, you can say that old is as good as new. You might be surprised by that, but it is indeed the case that electronic components are not necessarily affected. Uh, that is a probability that um, that is the probability of waiting an additional time does not depend on what happened in the past or how long that electronic component component has been working. Like in the case of an antenna, if you bought the antenna ten years ago and you evaluate the probability that it will survive an additional five years. It's the same as if you are going to buy an antenna now and you are going to evaluate the probability that it weighs, that it's going to survive for at least five years. There's nothing different. It's not because your antenna is older. The probability that it's going to survive is going to be less than the probability of a new antenna. That is not the case. So that's what I mean. In certain contexts, this applies, obviously, right? But... How would you know in which context this applies is when you are dealing with waiting time between two Poisson occurrences, then you know that this property applies. I repeat, this property doesn't apply in for any type of uh, random variable or any type of uh, situation, but it applies only for the exponential distribution. And of course, the exponential distribution is, in, is, is working with the waiting time between occurrences of Poisson events. So that is a little bit about the memoryless property, but obviously it's also good to understand why this is the case. Now, we have understood intuitively what it means here, but we should also understand mathematically what it means. Mathematically, is this true what we just wrote here? Or is it something that I'm just making up? So we can try to evaluate that mathematically as well. We know that the probability distribution of an exponential dis we know that the probability distribution the function distribution function rather of an exponential distribution is lambda e power negative lambda x as we just saw earlier okay this is what we saw here lambda e power negative lambda x of course for x greater than zero and lambda greater than zero now what we want to do is to show that the probability that x is greater than s plus t, given x is greater than s, is, let, let me just, it's not greater than s, I use the same thing like I did here. I want to show that this is the probability that x is greater than s, as we just saw before. s plus t, given x is greater than t, 
is greater than x is x greater than s now what i want to do here is to have a look at this and then i want to show that this is equal to this one now how are we going to do don't forget that x and lambda are both greater than zero yeah the probability that x is greater than s plus t i'm just going to prove this mathematically to you right now is what it's a conditional probability and if it is a conditional probability you can write this down in this form Now, what you're seeing here is just an application of what you've learned in the past weeks, where you understand that probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B over probability of B. That's just what I'm doing. Probability of A inter given B equal to A intersection B over B. That's all that I'm doing. There's nothing complicated about that part. Now, let's try to understand the denominator as it is, it will stay the same for the time being. Let's try to understand this part here, the numerator. We are saying what is common between x greater than s plus t and x greater than t. So you can just try to draw a small scale to understand that. So you have x greater than t and x greater than s plus t so you have a scale x here eh? and x greater than s plus t or t plus s or whatever it is right s plus t here we go x is greater than s plus t and then x is greater than t so t if it is 10 then t, uh, t plus 5 uh, is going to be 15 here on the right obviously so you are trying to evaluate what is common between these two. What is common between these two? Obviously, what is common between these two is this part. So which means that in the end, that whole thing here turns out to be the probability that x is greater than s plus t. So because we have seen that the only two common parts that you have here between these two things are what? Are x greater than s plus t so having obtained that now we can start evaluating our probability without any problem so we'll start by evaluating the probability that x is greater than t first why am i going to do that because if you have understood how to evaluate the probability that x is greater than t evaluating this probability will become easy and proving the formula will become easy so what i'll do I'm going to evaluate probability that x is greater than t first okay so normally it is a continuous probability distribution so if it is greater than t it starts from t but as you know x and lambda goes above zero in other words it ends at nowhere so basically it goes to infinity infinity there is no uh, upper limit given to x and lambda so in other words it goes to infinity and what's going to happen here is that we are integrating the function from t to infinity. What function? Lambda, t power negative lambda x dx. We move on to the next page. You will see that lambda can be taken outside because it's a constant. So what I've just done is that I've taken the lambda outside and t infinity t power negative lambda x as you see here. Next step is to do what? Is to integrate that function. Integrating the exponential distribution function will mean that you will get e power negative lambda x and then you need to differentiate that thing here to get negative lambda. Right? 
from t to infinity and obviously the negative goes outside the lambda cancels out leaving you with e power negative lambda x from t to infinity all right and this is equal to negative e power negative lambda negative infinity because when you replace lambda here you get e power negative lambda times infinity in other words it is e power negative infinity anything that you multiply with infinity obviously is infinity so then you need to subtract e power negative lambda t now what is a e power negative lambda you can see that e power negative lambda obviously is equal to zero you can try it in your calculator you can try e power negative one and see what happens you can try e power negative 100 and see what happens what happens and e power negative 1000 and you will see that all these values will in the end converge towards zero while this one stays as it is all right so in other word negative negative cancels out leaving you with e power negative lambda t so now look at this well we have been able to show that the probability that x is greater than t is equal to e power negative lambda t all right this is what we have observed if i ask you now what is the probability that x is greater than s i believe that you would have already recognized that there is no need for us to go through that whole step again because we know that x greater than t is e power negative lambda t so x greater than s would automatically be e power negative lambda s if you want you can try it and you will see that you will get e power negative lambda s so that's one thing let's have a look at the other one remember that in the numerator we add x is greater than s plus t so what is the probability that x is greater than s plus t the probability that x is greater than s plus so as i just said earlier probability that x is greater than t is equal to e power negative lambda t so the probability that x is greater than s plus t is e power negative lambda times not t now but s plus t t is replaced by s plus t so you have this part here so it's e power negative I can leave it like that because we're going to cancel out it later on so the we'll, we'll get back to what I, we were doing before so we were doing this all right we said that the probability that x is greater than s plus t given x is greater than t is equal to this part and we have come up to this now So, in other word here, when you look at that, you can rewrite this down here. So, we have e power negative lambda s times e power negative lambda t. Because e power negative lambda s minus e power negative uh, lambda t is the same as e power negative lambda s times e power negative lambda t. All right? Divide by probability x is greater than t is here e power negative lambda t is just a matter of knowing your indices properly all right and you will see that these two cancels out leaving you with e power negative lambda s now if you are smart enough i'm sure you are you will realize that if probability that x is greater than t is e power negative lambda s lambda t therefore e power negative lambda s is the same as the probability that x is greater than s as we just saw we, we just said here probability that x is greater than s is e power negative lambda s so if you got e power negative lambda s in other words you got the probability that x x is greater than s so we have been able to prove that the probability that x is greater than s plus t given x is greater than t is equal to the probability that x is greater than s mathematically proven intuitively we explained it through the example of the bus stop 
and just right now we mathematically prove it as well so we'll take an example that you have here suppose that the length of a phone call in this is an exponential variable with parameter lambda is equal to 0 0.1 now you see clearly here that in this particular example it tells you directly that your lambda is equal to 0 0.1 but it's not always the case in certain question it might not give you the parameter directly but it gives you the mean as i told you earlier so if the mean is one let's suppose it's 10 right then what you need to do is you need to be able to apply the exponential distribution you will need to do lambda is equal to 1 upon 10 then you can work it out all right so you will have to do this small conversion if needed if you are given the mean but in this particular context here you are not given the mean you are given the lambda directly 0 0.1 so go for it as it is what are you asked for if someone arrives immediately you see that you are dealing again with waiting time here now, if someone arrives immediately ahead of you at a public booth, find the probability that you will have to wait more than 10 minutes. So given that you are dealing with the waiting time, as you've noted here, that you have to wait for some time, right? Here, what you need to do is to realize that because you are dealing with waiting time, then x follows an exponential distribution and with what parameter 0 0.1 bearing in mind that if you were given the mean here instead of a parameter you would have had to do the reciprocal of the mean here but in this particular context you are given the parameter directly there is no need for you to do any conversion or any reciprocal or whatever just take it as it is in this particular context so what is by the way what is our random variable x our random variable x represent the length of the call made by the person in the booth all right the length of the telephone call made by the person in the booth what is the probability that you have to wait for more than 10 minutes the probability that you have to wait for more than 10 minutes excuse me the probability that you have to wait for more than 10 minutes is equal to the integral from 10 to infinity lambda e power negative lambda x dx that's what you need to do you have to integrate that function obviously you can go through the hard way that is you integrate the whole thing but if you have just noted uh, the proof that i just did earlier i showed to you that the probability that x is greater than t is equal to e power negative lambda t so you can just use this property to get the answer directly rather than going through the whole integration process which means that if uh, x greater than t 10 e, the probability that x is greater than 10 is equal to e power negative lambda which is 0 0.1 times 10 0 0.1 times 10 Which is equal to 0 0.368 right 0 0.368 now what is the probability that you have to wait between 10 and 20 minutes again you have to integrate between 10 and 20 uh, 0 0.1 e power negative 0 0.1 x dx then you will get your solu solution if you want to do that or you can do it this way but you can do it differently as well because we have just shown you that now try to understand that you are looking for the probability that x is between 10 and 20. you can do it by integrating this function but if you know this property that i've just shown you here all right this this property that x is greater than t is equal to e power negative lambda t then instead of going through the old process here you can do something you can find the probability that x is greater than 10 subtract the probability that x is greater than 20 because the exponential distribution is a probability distribution and if it is a probability distribution the whole area will sum up to one so 
if you are given a e power negative uh, if you are given the probability that x is greater than t is equal to e power negative lambda t directly and things are going to be far easier like that what you can do is you can take the probability that x is greater than t whatever this could be subtract the probability that x is greater than 20 x greater than 10 rather not t subtract the probability that x is greater than 20 because when you do that you will get only that particular part which is in between 10 and 20 probability that x is greater than 10 subtract the so just try to imagine that you have a scale here you have 10 and you have 20 you are looking for all the probabilities above 10 all right and you're looking for all the probabilities above 20. so if you want only that part in the middle what do you need to do you need to take the probability that x is greater than 10 the complete thing subtract that part that you don't need here and you will get only this particular part all right that's as simple as it as this here so obviously when you do this principle in other words it will be equal to what let me just write it up there this is going to be equal to e power negative 10 0 0.1 times 10 subtract e power negative 0 0.1 times 20 and you're supposed to get the same solution like if you were to integrate it this all way through all right so that's a little bit all and then there is another example here which i'm going to dis to discuss right now itself instead studies of a single machine tool system show that the time the machine operates before breaking down is exponentially distributed so the probability you have you already find the probability that the machine operates for at least 12 hours before breaking down so you will start by defining your x as usual let x represent the random let x be the random variable representing the machine operation time before breaking down and when you've done that you will realize that this is an exponential distribution obviously because you're dealing with waiting time and you will need to know what is the parameter but look at this here it tells you that it is exponentially distributed with mean of 10 hours mean of 10 hours means what expected value of x equal to 10 and we all know that expected value of x is 1 upon lambda. So what is lambda then? Lambda is obviously the reciprocal of 10, which is 0 0.1. So this is why to, you have to be careful in this particular context, because you are not given the rate as you were given in the previous example, but you are given the mean. So then what is the next step? Find the probability that the machine operate for at least 12 hours before breaking down is equal to e power negative lambda times 12 and you will get the solution for that or you can go through the integration as i told you earlier now let's have a look at this part if the machine has already been operating eight hours what's the probability that it will last another four hours if it has already been operating eight hours what's the probability that it will last another four hours be careful with that when we need to write this down probabilistically, we cannot say x is greater than 4 here. That would be wrong. If because we are dealing with the same x which represent the machine operation time before breaking down. And if x was used to be greater than 8 here, you cannot say x is greater than 4 now. That doesn't make sense. x is still going to be 12. When we say that what is the probability that it will last another 4 hours, now, you have to understand when it says it will last another four hours, it doesn't mean equal to four, four or whatever, equal to 12 here. No, it is still greater than because in an exponential distribution, you can't evaluate the probability of equality because it is a continuous distribution. So generally what you will do, this is why you will see that in particular example, X is greater than S plus T. We don't say X is equal to S plus T. Right? Why? Because we are dealing with the continuous setting and of course we have to work within a range. So it will last another four hours. It's like asking it will last at least four hours or more. Right? So if it has already been operating eight hours, what's the probability that it will last four another four hours is like writing this down mathematically as you see here. 
with the greater n. Eh? Don't think that it is equal. So this is equal to what? According to the memory less property, we know that the probability that x is greater than 12 given x is greater than 8 is x is greater than 4 by the memory less property. You can write it down. And this is equal to what? If our negative lambda, which is 0 0.1 times 4, and then you get your solution. 0 0.1 times 4, you get your solution. That is how to answer this question on exponential distribution. So that is all for exponential distribution. You have a second video which talks about the normal distribution.